All right, we're gonna talk about ionic compounds. First, we need to discuss very briefly monoatomic ions. So a monoatomic, meaning one atom, uh, and ion, meaning, meaning uh, that normal atom, has either lost or gained electrons. Now, when an atom loses electrons, well, electrons are negatively charged. So if it loses that negative charge, then it becomes positive. And we call positive ions cations. Likewise, if you have just a normal old atom and it gains electrons, then it's just gained negative charge. It's become more negative. And we call those negatively charged ions anions. So cations and anions, you could think of electric charge a lot like magnets, right? If you have a North Pole and a South Pole, they're going to attract each other. Well, it's the same thing with charges. And if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, they're going to attract each other, right? So let's say I have a charge of just one. Let's say one proton. Well, if that attracts one electron, right? An electron has a charge of minus one, right? A proton has a charge of plus one. Well, that's plus one and minus one. If those guys get together, then overall, there's no charge. It's zero, right? Because if you have plus one and you take away one, then you're left with zero. And now you're neutral. So that those two charges are happy, right? They basically, they attract each other and they can't attract anymore because there's just as much positive as there is negative. So it's happy the way it is. But let's say we had two protons here and one electron. Well now instead of a charge of plus one, we have a charge of plus two. And so this positive two, it's gonna, it's gonna pull negative charge towards it, right? But instead of g going to nothing, like instead of becoming neutral, overall we're still gonna have a charge of plus one. So these two protons aren't happy. They wanna pull another electron from somewhere because it wants to go to zero. Everything wants to go to zero when we're talking about ionic compounds. So it might be able to, it's gonna pull one negative charge. Now I said electron, but really as long as something is negatively charged, that's all it cares about because it's a positive charge. It wants to get what it wants from anywhere it can get it. So if now we had the two protons and it attracted some negative charge, but it didn't attract enough of it. So it's going to need to attract another negative charge. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Different monoatomic ions have different charges. Um, and we're going to get into uh, trends about why that is, uh, why certain ones have, uh, why certain ones are may, may be plus one while his other ones are plus three. We'll get into that when we talk about electronic structure. But for right now, I'm just going to say sodium usually always when it's in an ionic form, it likes to lose one electron and be plus one. Calcium likes to lose two electrons and becomes plus two. Now, chlorine, on the other hand, it likes to gain electrons. So if you gain a negative charge, you become negatively charged. And so, if chlorine, I said, likes to gain one electron, so it becomes chlorine minus one, right? Whereas oxygen, for instance, it likes to gain two electrons. So oxygen, if it gains two electrons, now it has a charge of minus two. Okay, now let's think about this the way we just did it. If, let's, let's take sodium first. So the sodium is the cation, right? And it has a charge of plus one. I'm gonna go one plus. I just, I like doing it that way. 
Either way you see it, plus one or one plus, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing in this case. So it likes to attract a charge of minus one. And if there's, let's say we just throw a bunch of sodium ions into, into a jar, right? Here we are, uh, boom. We just threw one sodium ion into a jar and now if there's some chlorine in there, some chloride actually, and we'll get into why, why I called it chloride in a minute, it's, since it has a charge of plus one and this has a charge of minus one, then they want to come together, right? It's gonna attract that negative charge. So the plus one and Cl minus one, they come together and the overall charge now is zero. So it's happy, right? Because all the charges want to go to zero. But let's say instead we had a we had chlorine in here. We had a bunch of chloride ions, right? They're just floating around in this bucket. Now if I throw in one atom or one ion of calcium, calcium two plus. Since it has a charge of two plus, it's not going to be happy by just grabbing one of those chlorines, okay? Because now it was two plus and it grabs one of the chlorines, chlorine one minus. Well, overall, you still have a charge of plus two minus one. Well, that's, that's one. So we still have a charge of plus one right here. So it's going to grab another one of these chlorines it's gonna come along and boom, sink into there. And now overall, we have a charge of plus two, minus one, minus one. So overall, it's zero. And it's happy. Because once, once the charges are balanced out, everybody's happy. He's not gonna attract anymore because he's, po he's not positive anymore. And these guys aren't gonna be, these guys are happy because their negative charge is quenched. So we're going to, one more thing before we move on. Let's say I had a bunch of sodium ions here in this, let's just say water, let's say it's water. And then I were to throw in one ion, an anion of O2 minus. Well, the exact same thing's gonna happen, right? This O2 minus, one of these is gonna find its way over there and it's gonna be attracted. So the O2 minus is gonna like the sodium plus one. And when they come together, now there's an overall charge of minus one, but there's still a charge. So these other positive guys are floating around and this guy wants to be quenched this guy wants to be quenched, so the other sodium comes along, boom, plus one. Now there's two of these in really close proximity to this guy, so all together, now their net charge is zero, and everybody's happy. So this is now what we call an ionic compound, and we say that these form ionic bonds, which are very strong, and, um, and it, it basically it holds all these atoms together. Now, we're, uh, the next video, we're gonna talk about how we name something like this. And we're gonna go into a bit more um, uh, complicated examples.